Hi Intune friends, in this video we're gonna do something cool. We're gonna take help again of Winget to package a Win32 app. And what's so good with that is that it always get the latest version. If you download an MSI file, you get the specific version and you have to update monthly or weekly and sometimes. Here we're always gonna have the latest and the package gonna be so small because it's just a script line. In this video, we're gonna package Microsoft SQL Management Studio. If you have another software, you can use this video and just change the ID for your software. Microsoft SQL Management Studio is a good one because it's a software that not everyone needs, but a few. So we're gonna put it in the company portal for self-service. So let's start to look a bit what is Winget. So I'll open a terminal. And I'm going to open it as uh, administrator. Let's go yes here. So Winget is included in Windows 10 and later, and for sure for Windows 11, it's a command line tool. So if we just type Winget or Winget.exe here, then we're going to get some uh, uh, command here. So we have install, very nice. That's actually one we're going to use. We're also going to use uninstall for uninstall script. You can use it for remediation script. I have a few videos about that to upgrade. Love that. We're also going to use search because we're going to need to find some information about the package. In this case, Microsoft SQL uh, Management Studio. And there are some other good um, uh, tools. But Let's start. So if we run here, I'll, I'll uh, clear host again because I'm in PowerShell. If you were in um, normal uh, command line, it would be uh, CLS. So let's type winget and then there was this search. So just winget, you can do winget.exe or just winget. Let's type this and search and see what else parameter it is. Okay, so we can search for software. So I type again winget.exe search and then dash dash ID. So we can take an ID who have, let's look only for SQL. We're gonna find a lot more than Microsoft SQL. So now it's download the list, the latest one, and now it's gonna display which uh, software we could install with Winget. You see, it's a lot, a lot. I have no idea what it is, uh, WebJog SQL community. We actually want this one here, Microsoft SQL Server Management Studio. And at the time of this recording, February 2024, it's 19.3. You may be have 19.4 or even 20, that's fine. We don't care about version, we always want the latest. So I'll select this one, do control C, we're gonna need that. So now we're gonna look into install because we have the ID. So if we do winget, dot exe install let's see what parameter that gives so for install we can put the id if we know the exact id we can even do dash e or dash dash exact then it must be exact id and we have found it we can use name also but the, I, I prefer id if we didn't want the latest version we could specify which version we want we want the latest version and we want to install for machine. If it support, you can, it's default to machine very often, unless you run as non-admin, then it usually user. And user, that means uh, app data install. And then there is, uh, we want it silent. And there are some others such as don't ask for accept package agreement and accept source agreement. So. Let's start to type here our command. So we so now we do it manually after we're gonna package this in a script and deploy with Intune. So winget install, install, that looks nice. Then we do dash E, that was for exact because we want to find the package using the exact match and we match it on ID. And I just do control V because we did the search command before. Oh, I copied the version. Let's see if my Windows V favorite one works. It does, and here it is. So Microsoft.SQL Server Management Studio. If we hit enter now, 
it's actually going to start to install that exactly what we, not exactly what we want, but it would work. But we also want it silent. I'm not going to run it silent now because this takes some time to install. It's fairly big. I think it's 600 megabyte to download and once extracted, it's three gigabyte. But we can add some of the other parameters. For example, we can do accept package agreement. If we don't add that, uh, we have to say yes to it. And well, we don't want that because we want it as silent as possible. Uh, same for accept source agreement. So we copy that also. Uh, for some reason, Microsoft SQL Server Management Studio is a 32-bit software. You can specify with architecture here and say that you want to 64-bit x64, but it will ignore it for this case because it's only existing 32-bit. If you have both 32-bit and 64-bit, then you can specify this. Most often, 64-bit is the default, so not the switch you need to use so often. I use it for Oracle Java because I want that in 32-bit, um, but in all other packages, I never need to use that. There are some other um, uh, other um, dashes here, location, if, if you don't want the same as the US or English. But let's run this. This is going to take some time. So I'm going to fast forward because it can take nearly 10 minutes to install, depending on your connection, of course, and the hardware. So let's run this just quickly before. So we run winget install. E for exact, we have the ID because we did the search before. This is the ID. And then we just add this to not prompt the user for agreeing for agreement. So let's hit enter and see if this works. And I didn't by purpose do the dash dash silent because I want us to see this. So yes, 646 megabyte. So here it says the download link. And uh, for 0x409, that means English. If we change the location to Swedish or Indian or Japanese or Chinese, that would change here also. So we know it's downloading the English one. It had downloaded. Here comes the long installation. And again, I didn't do the dash dash silent. So we're going to see the pop up. And that's the part I'm going to fast forward. So see you once that's done. Okay, so it finished. It took definitely not 10 minutes, but pretty long. So normally now it should be installed. Let's see if I type in uh, SQL Management Studio. Yep, it's here. It takes pretty long time to start if I remember also. So it's a good tool if you are on the client and you want to connect to another server or have the full SQL, then you can do to the working from your desktop. Okay, yeah, it takes some time to open up. Here you would connect to your SQL server and then choose authentication and connect. And then you can ask, uh, you translate SQL server queries. Okay, now we have tested that the winget command works. It's installed the Microsoft SQL Management Studio. Great, now we wanna package this to an Intune win file upload it to Intune and be able to deploy it to anyone who needs it. So let's start a source folder. So if I go to my root on C here, whoop, I have uh, one I called Intune packages. Here I have another package we have done in the previous video. Let's create the folder here. So there are three ways or maybe even more. We can click new here, create a folder. We can right click and new folder or we can do control shift n and create the folder let's call this microsoft which is the vendor sql management studio i'll do a dash to separate and then call it x86 so no version number because we don't know what version number it's always going to be the latest in here we're going to create two folders I do them a bit different. So let's call this one output. Here is where we're gonna put the Intune win file after. And we can also create another folder called source. And that's not how you spell source. 
I don't know why I have a problem with that. So here we have source. Here's where we're going to put our script. It's going to be two scripts, installed and uninstalled. They're going to be like two kilobyte. Then we need the uh, image for self-service. And then we just need a tool. And actually we need a script, uh, detection script. But we, we come to that. Let's start to do the script that installed, the one we just more or less done. So I have pre-prepared it, but I'm going to go through every line. No worries. Very detailed. So this is a bit how our script is going to look. Let's start from the beginning. So where is this pound or hash sign, all this sign here, if you put one in the top, well, one in the beginning of a line, it becomes um, comment. That means that all this, when this be run by Intune in PowerShell, it's going to ignore this. This is just for us uh, humans. So this line also and this line. It's just explain what's going to happen. So this explain what it's going to do. It's going to install Microsoft SQL Management Studio from the WinGet repository. Author, it's me. Date, today you're at this recording. It's the 2nd February 2024. Then the first we set the variable. How do you know in, in PowerShell something is a variable? Well, it starts with a dollar sign. And then you can put any name you want, more or less, as long as it's unique. And here is the ID. So this script is going to be in the description of this video. And all scripts that I'm going to show in this video, you can find in the description of the video. So if you likely are not so interested in installing Microsoft SQL Server Management Studio, fine. You put in your code here, uh, your ID here, and you keep the rest and it's going to work. So here you might see our, uh, this looks very much the command we run to install. So we have winget.exe, we have install, we have e for exact, what exact, exact ID. And here comes the variable. So here it's the $GBM winget app ID. It's the same as here. That means that whatever is written in the quotation going to be exchanged here. So this $GBM winget app ID is going to be exchanged to this here. Microsoft.SQL Management Studio. That's what I meant. If you wanted to install VLC or something else, you put it there. You can keep this the same. We want it silent. I didn't run it silent because I wanted in the video we saw the uh, pop-ups. But other than that, we had this accept uh, package agreement and accept source agreement. We didn't have force. Uh, that's an extra. So. Then you might wonder why do we have dot backslash here and why do we need this line here? Well, I'm gonna explain that quickly. So if I open a CMD this time, I'll run it as uh, admin, not really needed. You can run it as a normal user. And just to uh, explain here, if you see here, I'm under C Windows Systems 32. If I run winget and hit enter, it, it runs Winget, even though I'm in uh, System32. Uh, and if we would list here, uh, we can do uh, dear and list all who start with the uh, win and end with the exe. See if we have Winget here. We have win BIOS, we have win load, but we don't have anything called Winget. So how can it find Winget? For example, if I type my name, john.exe, I'm going to get here. John.exe is not recognized. How can it find winget.exe? Well, it looks in the path. So when I type winget.exe, it's first going to look in C Windows System 32. Okay, if I don't find it there, I'm going to look in something called path. So if I hit path here and scroll up, it's going to look First, in uh, this here, C program files common Oracle Java path and see, hey, is there a winget here? No, and continue. And actually, it's going to find it here. So if I go, I'll copy this one. And I see I copy a bit too much. If I go CD, paste here, this path here. And now do the same, dear win and then asterisk for wildcard.exe. Are there anything called the... Uh, uh, win. Yep, there are two stuff. Win <laughs> that, but here we have win that win get exe. That's why I can stand anywhere. I can be on the root of uh, C. I clear it's a bit messy. Even if I type win get here, 
thanks to the path, I'm going to find it. The, here comes the problem, though. If uh, this is when running under my profile, Intune run as system, and system, if we look the path of system, doesn't have any path who find Winget. So if we don't, if we only run this command under Intune and run a system, it's going to say, I can't find Winget. Where is Winget? So it's going to fail. And if we go to any package, apps, any Win32 package, Win32 app package, I should say. So I have a few here. Let's take, um, let's take um, Oracle Java, for example. Here, if I go properties and then go edit under uh, program, you see installed behavior. It's checked the system here. It's a bit grayed out. We actually saw it better on uh, here. So it says um, uh, up here, installed behavior. It's installed by system and system doesn't find winget. So ho hope that went through. I have a video showing this also where you use PSXEC to run a system. So that's why in on line nine, we are helping um, uh, Winget to find, uh, we are helping system to find Winget. And set location, it's the same to say, hey, I want to change uh, like CD in, um, in um, CMD, change location. Where should we change it? Path, environment. That's a variable again. Program five. Uh, program v sixty four thirty two. It's a variable who very often go to C program files. Not always. If you install the Windows on D colon, it becomes D colon. So we can see that again. A bit messy here. If we type set, we get all our variables environment, and there should be one called yep. Here, program v6432, that's going to be C program files. So basically, this here, dollar environment colon program v6432, going to be exchanged to C program files on my machine, and most likely on yours too. Then it goes to Windows app, and then Microsoft desktop installer. And here we have an asterisk. Why? Because we don't know which version it is. So it's a wildcard. And under here, we have a winget. So so that is how system finds winget. And why do we need to put the dot backslash? Well, since we changed the location to where winget is, to do dot backslash, we tell uh, PowerShell run winget from the location where you are, which is the good location. So pretty advanced, but no worries. You can just copy and use this again. Winget can't be found by system. That's why we need all this extra. So this script is good. We can save this now, save as, and we go back to C, Intune packages, our source folder and under source. Change, which should not be a TXT, put the asterisk. So it's gonna be a PS1 file. So I name it, I prefix it with install dash Microsoft SQL management, Studio, I like to put latest and then x86. And here comes the important. Oh, looks like 86 didn't work there. Dot ps1. So it the one from the beginning, Microsoft probably wanted to have ps2 for PowerShell 2 and so on, but finally they kept only one. So it's PowerShell 1. So we save this one. Perfect. We get some coding. All that's green again, it's comments, not gonna run. And why don't we do an uninstall uh, uh, command as well? So we can run the same command nearly as we had for installing, but for uninstalling, it's a little di bit uh, different. So if we go again, I clear the screen. If we do winget uninstall, we get to see all the parameters. So we, uh, oh, it didn't like uninstall because I didn't type it correct. If I type it correct, if we do winget uninstall there, we have nearly the same. There are a few different, for example, uh, accept package agreement. I don't think exists in this one. Nope. 
so we can remove package agreement. Other than that, we can just change this to uninstall. So I'm gonna duplicate this script. I'm gonna save as, and this time we save it as uninstall because they are so alike. And latest, it doesn't have to stay because it uninstall any version, even if it's not the latest. So now we are on the uninstall. So just change here to uh, uninstall. And again, I'm gonna put this script in the in the description of uh, this video. We said there is no accept package agreement. If we keep that for uninstall, it's gonna fail. The rest we can keep. And why don't we run this and test that it actually uninstalls? So I do a CLS again, I paste this. If I do it as a one-liner, it's not gonna understand this. So I'm gonna replace uh, Microsoft SQL uh, Server Management Studio, this variable. So I'll put myself there. Uninstallation script isn't that important, but each, each package needs one, so it's good to have. Let's see if this works. Oh, I forgot to put uninstall. Very important, obviously. So now we run winget uninstall, the exact ID. If you don't do the exact ID, you might uninstall other stuff. So uh, be sure that you have the right uh, command there. Let's run this and see if it's going to uninstall. It found that it's installed. Now it's starting to uninstall. I don't know how long time it takes to uninstall, but I'm going to fast forward it to you. So see you once this is uninstalled. Okay, so it's successfully uninstalled. Perfect. Then we know we have uh, the good command. So now we have what we need. So now we need to change this into an Intune Win file. That's what Intune needs. So to do that, we are missing one tool. So I have, I will give the link in the description, but we are speaking about our friend Microsoft Win32 Content Prep Tool. That's the one who's going to take our source folder and turn it into an Intune Win file. So I guess we download that, download the zip, unless you don't already have it. If you have done other package, you can reuse, but it's good to check here sometimes. Now it's three months. That was in 2023, 6 November. And well, let's extract all here. Uh, it's a lot. I think it's a PDF who is bigger than the actual EXE or something in there. So we go here. Yeah, this is the one we want. Uh, remove details. It's actually hide the details. Yeah, the PDF is bigger. <laughs> Let's uh, copy this one. Go back to our uh, Intune package, our Microsoft SQL Management Studio, and this should not be in the source. Let's put it here, paste. Let's run this one and then specify the source, which file it should look in there, and then the output. So this doesn't have to be in a command prompt uh, admin. I have tried this in the terminal and it usually exit out and crash on me. So I use this for, that's why I prefer the command line prompt for this. Maybe it's just my machine. So I will have to go where it is. So I think mine is called Intune Packages. I do a backslash. I know it's Microsoft something, yes. And if I do a dir here, then the tool is here. I'll do CLS so it's come up here on the top. I run this one into win app util and it's gonna ask four questions. First one is the source folder. Let's let's get the source folder. So I copy this way, control C, paste here for the specific setup file. It's any file in the source. If you have an MSI file, I recommend always take that. If not, it doesn't really matter. Just take any one. So I select this one, do an F2, a fake rename, control A, control C, just to get the file name. Paste that here. Output folder, I'm gonna get that one in a different way. So if we go here, on Windows 10, I think you need to shift right click. On Windows 11, you can just right click and then copy as path. Okay, we paste that, control V. Now we have the output. Do you want a specific catalog folder? Always no on that, unless you have a Windows S environment, which I never seen anyone have. 
So and see, it didn't crash. It actually created it. Perfect. So now if we go and check our output folder, we have the file. Excellent. Excellent. So now we have our Intune Win file, which contains um, both both our scripts. So they're only one kilobyte each, and the output usually a bit bigger. Maybe it's three or four, three kilobyte. It's encrypted and everything. So now we have the source files, which we don't need anymore really because we have done an Intune Win file. We have used Intune Win app util. We need two more things. One that we do directly now. Let's get an icon for this that we can use in the company portal. So for example, what I mean is if we go to company portal here, this icon here. If we don't put any, we get the default one, but it's always nice to have a real icon. So I shamefully just will go to Google and see if we can find one. So what should that be? Microsoft SQL Management Studio um, icon, PNG, transparent if possible. Uh, yeah. It's not really, this is the full SQL server. This one looks nice. If it's transparent, see if I can take it directly like this. Save image as. Um, looks like we're in the good place. PNG. Uh, I prefix it icon. It can be any name, of course. Uh, Microsoft SQL Management management uh, studio, right? Perfect. Hope that one works good. If we open it, we'll see if it's just transparent. If it's black background, then it's good. Nice. I like it. Okay. I'll close this tab. Then I forgot to show something in the beginning that I was planning, but it's not that important. I mean, we installed this with Winget. If you really want to install SQL Server Management Studio with MSI, you can go and download it. Uh, where, did, where did I see? Yeah, free download. And the problem is that you get 19.3, so you will have to uh, repackage it. With Winget, you also get 19.3, but if they update, you can use the same package. It's always going to download the latest. Okay, so now we are ready to upload this. So I go back to the beginning. So we go to intune.microsoft.com. We log in. We go under Apps. Then we go under Windows. And then we click here on the plus with the Add. Then we get up a pane here on the right. And it has to be Windows app Win32. So let's click on that. We select that. Now select an app package file. That's the file we created, the Intune Win file, which is in our output folder. So we're going to browse that one. Uh, we are in the good folder already. Excellent. Output. So here is our Intune Win file, very small. It's not going to start to upload it before we have reached all the steps here. So click OK, which is fine. This one is so small, but I would have preferred it started to upload while we fill in this if it's, you know, a gigabyte or something. OK, name. Should I zoom in a bit? Yes, I'm on 90 only. Why should I be that? OK, here. So name, let's keep Microsoft. Put a little space here, SQL. SQL Server, I see it sometimes, but SQL Management Studio is fine for me. R let's remove the latest. I think, we, yeah, I don't have to put x86, could do that. Let's do the description. So the description could be, well, we could installs the latest version of, this is what the user is gonna see in the company portal. So be careful what you put there. It's going to be visible. And if we put two asterisks in the end and two asterisks in the beginning, we're going to get it bold. We see it down here and we see we can use more. We can write a lot of things here if we want to give information to the user before they install it. Perfect. Publisher, well, it's going to be Microsoft. Oops, Microsoft. Version, I put the latest. 
category, my favorite, uh, let's call it data management. And with favorite, I'm being ironic. Show this as a featured app. If you're packaging an app to company portal that you think nearly everyone will want, then put it yes. I think SQL Management Studio is fairly non-popular, so I keep it no. Then you can add some extra URL. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to put myself as owner. And notes, I'm going to put today's date, 2nd February 2024. I put my name also, in case someone is wondering why do we have this. They know how to reach out to. Here's the image that we took. So let's select the image. Let's click on the little folder here to browse it. We put that together here and click OK. Hopefully that, that, that is good. Then we are finished with the first one, which is most actually, so we can go next. Here, install commands. So we're just gonna run a PowerShell script. So we can actually call powershell.exe. Then we're gonna do something called execution policy bypass. I'm gonna explain that one. So by default, the execution policy is restricted, meaning that it doesn't allow to run any PowerShell script. So here we just bypass that with this. So if, do I have a PowerShell? I don't, let's open up one. So if we start one, you can see what execution policy you have by doing get execution policy. I probably changed this to unrestricted. No, it actually is restricted. So what we do is that we set execution policy, and here I think it's gonna suggest, either it's to all signed script, don't use that, we haven't signed our script. Bypass, it's the one we do. Oh, I always do an uppercase P, that works, but not needed actually. Default, which is restricted, remote sign, restricted, undefined, unrestricted. If I set this, then um, uh, I can run as much as I want, but I have to be, uh, I had needed to start PowerShell as an admin to set that. If not, anyone would just set unrestricted and would have no security means. So that's why we put bypass. Then what should we run? Well, why not run the file? And we do dot backslash. Which file should we run? Well, since we have it directly in the source and no subfolder, we can just take this name. So I do again uh, F2, Control A, Control C to copy. So we run that. The uninstallation commands nearly the same. So I do Control A, Control C, Control V and paste this, but I just remove the name. It's gonna be the other one uninstalled. I do so much typos. So I prefer to be sure to do an F2, Control a, control C, and then control V. The installation time required in minutes, this is fairly new, like end of 2023. 60 minutes is very long time, so it has to finish. This one take pretty long time, so I'm actually gonna keep this 60. If not, if it's a smaller software, you can definitely take it down. But 60, let's keep that. This one is also fairly new. It's to allow uninstall from the company portal. I love that, finally. And since we have a nice uninstallation script, let's keep that. Here comes the installation behavior. We definitely want to run this as system. If we run it as user, it might work, but it's gonna install it in app data. So uh, if we go here, percentage app data, or maybe it just fail. So you see here, uh, it could be under local actually. It could be installed here or something like uh, uh, the app in here. If you want it under C program files where most of the software resides, then you definitely want it to run a system. And that's again why we need this extra line to find a winget. Okay, uh, device restart behavior. No, we don't want any restart. We don't need to add any extra return code. If it finished with a strange return code like 582 and that's a success, we could add that. But this is a good uh, software. So we just continue. Then requirements. Well, it can run on 32-bit OS, obviously, but uh, I have only 64-bit, so I'm gonna check here. You can totally check the 32-bit also. Minimum operating system. I'm gonna be a nice guy and allow something really old. See here, it doesn't even have a 23H2 yet. I don't know why they are so slow on that. 
I'll accept the very old Windows 10. Disk space required. Well, it takes 300, uh, no, three gigabytes. So I put 3000 megabyte. And why is this? Well, if a machine only have one gigabyte, why should it even try to install this? We know it's going to fail. So it's actually checked that they have this requirement before running the installation. Let's go next. Here's the detection rule. And I, by purpose, waited to uh, do this one. Uh, and it's because it's a bit special. We could look manually here and look, for example, uh, for the that the file exists. But we can't look version because we don't know which version. We're always installing the latest. So if we say, hey, look for version 19 something, then it have changed. So this would work, but it's much nicer to run um, custom detection script. So I'm, we're going to create that script now in the middle of here. We could have done it earlier, but I like to do it at this point because it's easier to explain when we are here. So the detection rule is very important. It runs before it's tried to install. If it finds that it's already installed, it stops there and says success. If it doesn't, then it run the program. After the program has run, it's run again the second time, the exact same detection rule. If it finds that it's installed perfect, then it's good. If not, it give an error. So let's see, I have prepared the detection rule script. It's pretty advanced. So, um, but I'm gonna explain each line. So first, I'm gonna save it first though, because then we get the color encoding, so it's easier to explain. So we definitely don't want that in the source. It's a big misconception also. This is outside. And again, we want it as a PS1 script, so we can call this detection output script. It's maybe not need detection script, Microsoft, SQL manage oh management studio dot ps1 save that so we get the color encoding again everything that's in green that's just for us we could put whatever we want it's just comments for us and I mean if we change something we could add like uh, update added line 45 adding logging or something I mean and then put the date so whoever reads this later see it. So the same as the previous script, we have a variable with the, the winget software that we run. Then again, since this is going to run a system, we help it to find winget with this set location. So far, so good. Nothing changed from the previous script. Here comes the new thing. So we search for this app on the internet. We take this and then we split because we just want to see what is the version number. So here comes the, we want to know what is the latest online. So what we do is that we take the search, then the minus one means we start from the end and we go two and minus two means we go two columns from the right and in. I'm going to show that with an example. So let's not do that in PowerShell. Let's do it in the CLS here. So I'm just going to clean up a bit in a ter terminal, what I'm saying, in a CMD. So if we run this, we get search. We know the exact and the ID. See if I can paste in the ID. Look, there it comes. Okay. So if I hit enter now here, it's going to search for this one. So all the text you see here, it's in this variable GBN search because we add an equal sign there. Then we create another variable and split this saying that we start from the end. The end is down here, right? And then we go two columns minus from right to left. So source and version, and we are still at the bottom. So we're gonna copy the version number. So this GBN online version gonna be equal 19.3. And if this version update, probably when you're watching this video, there's a newer version, then the GB on online version is going to be that. So it's very dynamic, this script. Okay, so here we know what is the latest version online. Now we want to see what is installed, if anything. So now we look locally. We look, is this installed? If it's not installed, perfect. Then 
we the detection script can exit with one. If it exits with one, that means that it's a problem, which means that it's not installed. So then uh, it will run our script to install it. If it's already installed, then we want to see is the local version um, uh, newer or older than what's on the internet. So we actually down here later do, we check, we get the version with the same logic as before. What What is the version? Is that greater or equal? Normally it shouldn't be great, greater, maybe equal, equal, equal to what's online. If it's not, then it's mean, well, if it is, that means perfect. You got the latest version, we exit with zero. That means all is good for the detection script. If the local version is not newer than what's online, that means we want an upgrade. Then we exit with one, so it's gonna run. So long explanation, but here we have the script. So I'll put that in here, detection script. So basically what the detection script is, saying if there is no SQL management installed, then run and install it. If it exists, but it's not the same version as exists online, then also run. The only way this one stops and say, hey, we don't have to run, all is good, is if the it's already installed and it's the same or greater version than online, which shouldn't exist. So that's the logic behind this. And again, that script that we just created, it's in the description of this video. And if you're using it, you just have to change line six here to your software. All the rest, it's taken care of. Okay, the script is up here. We don't want to run this as a 32-bit process. Nope. And we definitely don't want to enforce a script signature because we haven't signed this script. If we do yes here, it's going to fail. So definitely no here. We don't have any dependencies. This uh, package doesn't uh, supersede any other assignment. So what we could do, we can add it available for uh, all users. So they get it in the company portal. I like to show the toast notification also. So they see something is happening. Then required, that means it's just gonna install. And Maybe you have some DBAs or something who always want this. So I have a group in my fake company, GBN, that all uh, who are SQL database administrators, they are gonna get this. And actually for them, I don't want to show the Toast notification. I just want it to install silent so they have it. Okay, let's go next. When we hit the create here, that's when it's gonna upload the very big, uh, what was it, two kilobyte. So it shouldn't take too long time. It have created, but it's not finished yet, I think. Uh, no, it's not ready yet. It's still there. Application saved successfully. Let's see if it's finished. If we see, yeah, when you see the blue edit line here. Okay, so now we have done the job. Now we can go to another machine who doesn't have this already installed. Okay, here I am on another machine. I waited a bit for it to sync. Let's go company portal. And uh, you remember, I didn't put it as a featured app. Oh, it still shows up here. If you don't see it, you can go to apps. And here is the Microsoft uh, SQL Management Studio. So let's install this. We get some extra text that's not ours. Our text is this one that we put. We put the version, which I say latest because we don't know whatever it is. It's whatever Winget have. Let's hit install. So when we hit install now, it's gonna download our Intune Win file, then extract it and just extract our two uh, PS1 script. And it says downloading pending. And let's see here. I don't really like this wording. It's gonna say installing, but when it's installing, it's actually uh, downloading or something. Let's see what it says. Here it says installing. Perfect, we have the pop-up, so it's seeing. Yeah, it go 
It says installing, but it actually just downloaded the files. So it's not really installing. Now it's running in the background. It's going to take a long time. I'm going to pause uh, the video. And uh, once it's finished, uh, uh, let me show it. Um, so first it ran the detection script to verify that it doesn't that it should show install at all if it already had it uh, installed we should see the uninstall button so now it's going to install then it's going to run the um, detection script again and if the detection script shows that it's good which means exit with zero in our script then it's going to give success so i post the video now it's going to be a bit long or i fast forward and see you once it's installed Okay, there it installed successfully. That means our detection script worked well. Okay, excellent. Then it should change from reinstall to uninstall uh, since we said that. Let's see if we go out and back. And it says installed. Yeah, here, so now we could technically run our uninstallation script and uninstall it. Perfect, let's go back to uh, the main machine where I created the package, where we created the package. And uh, after a while, it's gonna take some time reporting. It says install pending, but it's gonna change to uh, success. I noticed one mistake when I uh, uninstall script. I forgot to put uninstall here, so the uninstall script will not work. So we need to save this one, recreate the Intune Win file, and then re-upload it for it to work. But I will put in the, you saw earlier in the video that I put in red text that I have done this mistake. So hopefully you didn't do the same as mine. So I have to do again here, recreate and upload upload a new Intune Win file if I really want the uninstallation script to work because right now it's actually going to install and so it's going to fail. A uh, quick little uh, recap. We went through how Winget works, how to search for package, how to install, how to uninstall. Then we package it into an Intune Win file. Then we uploaded it to Intune. We added all the metadata, the program. We spoke a bit about the execution policy. We ran it successfully from company portal. We covered a lot of ground. And this you can reuse for all your apps that are supported by Winget. And those are many and more get there. So I really hope you like this video. I think all that you learned from this is very, very useful in the real world. So thank you very much for watching. Have a great day.